Hello and welcome. I'm Parisa Shelton and today I am joined by one of my dear friends and mentors, Kiski Hawk. Kiski and I go way back since 2014. We've been working and collaborating together for over eight years. We met in Willow Glen when Chris and I had the studio and Kiski was teaching some incredible yoga classes. We continued our work together throughout the pandemic where we were able to guide people, mostly online, to reach higher states of well-being, expand their consciousness, and just feeling better all around. So hello, Kiski, and welcome. Hi there. Thank you for contacting me and letting us talk one-on-one -on -one here. I'm so excited. And so today we're going to talk about self-care. A few weeks ago, we had released a video specifically on self-care, and within a day, Kiski sent us this beautiful self-care booklet separately. We hadn't talked. She just sent me the booklet that she created. And we're going to make that booklet available to you in the description below. I just got my wheel spinning and I thought, wow, that's not by accident. So let's have a dialogue and a conversation about what people can do to take better care of themselves, form these healthy habits so that we can all be the best versions of ourselves. So why is self-care so important? Oh my gosh, it's the basis of having a resource within yourself that is not yet depleted mm. so that you can be grounded in self-awareness and in uh, self-actualization, which is one of the more important parts of our uh, personal development uh, so that we can share that resource, that energy, that compassion, that goodness with others, with authenticity. Wow. Some of us share until we are at absolute depletion. We share beyond our reserves. And like a balloon that's run out of air, we just become limp and flaccid but without any internal resource because we've given it all away. So much harder to inflate the balloon from that point than it is just to add extra air when it becomes a little soft. Uh, that's so true. And I love that analogy. And I would venture to say that many, many people have been deflated over the last several years. And so that's really our work and our collaboration is to give people specific things that they can do to reflate so that they don't get to that point of exhaustion and burn burnout mm -hmm. specifically. And one of the, oh, I want to say uh, one of the challenges of self-care is that we know that we need it at the point beyond which we are sometimes able to provide it to ourselves. Ah. Like, I notice that I need some self-care when I am thoroughly exhausted. And sometimes my body takes over and I become sick or I become so achy, I am unable to participate in things that I used to enjoy. Mm -hmm. My I, creativity becomes decreased so that my ability to find nurturing foods and to spend time cooking well for myself mm -hmm. is has evaporated. Um, so I eat more poorly. I'm not sleeping well. I don't find fun in life mm -hmm. because I am thoroughly depleted. And then I go, oh, I need to take care of myself. And then I look around in a panic, like, what can I do? I'm too tired to do anything. Uh -huh. So that's like, oh my gosh, this is you know, you've gone all exactly. the way down to the depth of the well, mm -hmm. and self care seems so remote. Totally. Yeah. I'm so, sure we can, a lot of us can relate to that. And that's when we reach for the chips or we reach for whatever it is to try mm -hmm. to fill us up or fill that void. Yes. But ultimately, it's like the spiral that just when you're there, it just keeps accumulating. So, how does someone start to climb out of that, that depth? Mm -hmm. that deep I'm smiling because the word for inspiration is also the inhale so when you inhale you can 
breathe in, you inspire, mm. you breathe in some more energy, and then you can calm yourself more into right thinking through the exhale mm. because your nervous system calms down a little bit and you're not so panicked. Wow. So the first part of self-care is to moderate your breathing. Mm. Like it's, it's right there. Like within five or 10 breaths, you may in fact be able to think of something that you could do for yourself, even if it's as simple as walk over to the sink and drink a glass of water. Mm. That's the other thing that you're, you're drinking soda or coffee to keep you going, right. or maybe you're drinking alcohol in order to bring yourself down, uh, you know, so you're not drinking just nurturing water. Yeah. Mm. So you can breathe. You can take a sip of water. You could open your eyes and bring yourself to a window to look out and see a tree or a plant or look down and see a weed that is growing up between the cracks in the sidewalk. A weed won't give up. I know. I'm not going to give up. A weed won't give up. So uh, there are little baby steps toward uh, finding grounding and um, mm. a sense of, of survival. Mm. And clarity. It's like clarity. Yes. Because yes. when you're in that kind of depth of despair, you're not thinking clearly. Absolutely. That's a great, that's a great word for it and a great point because everything, I call it the minestrone soup of despair. Oh, I'm sending <laughs> that back. <laughs> there's everything in there. There's noodles, there's beans, there's vegetables, there's broth. There's, it's just like, I can't tell what this is. <laughs> a minestrone <clears throat> soup of despair. Everything is thrown in, including the past, things you have no control over, including yeah. fears about the future, things that haven't even happened yet, mm. including the exhaustion and the lack of resources you may experience in the present moment. It's all there, all mm. at once. It's incorrect. We're not, ex everything isn't happening at once. Right, yeah. I, yeah. I just wrote a little note saying time travel is possible, but only at the speed of now. Oh, goosebumps when you said that. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love that. Write that down. Yeah. <laughs> only at the speed of now. Right. So you can only breathe in the present moment. When you drink the water, you're stimulating your nervous system, your voice box, your, your, if it's cool water or room temperature water, you're inspiring uh, your whole digestive system. As a, as a yogic, I kind of suggest not ice water. And not right, same in Chinese medicine. water, yeah, you know, just nice medium, you know, but the whole swallowing, Mm -hmm. is a swallowing not of your words, not of your feelings, not of your reactions, not of your fears. You're not swallowing your fears. You're swallowing the fluid. Mm, I not, love that. So that is like, those are like emergency interventions. The true trick of self-care mm -hmm. is to practice it when you do not need it. Mm. I know like oh but am I being selfish if I take time to take a 15 minute walk by myself or am I being selfish if I choose to have a meal that actually I'm the only one who likes this food uh, am I being selfish if I go into the other room and do some mindful movement am I being selfish if I close the door and sing so I don't bother anybody while I'm chanting or singing or playing the recorder as I'm learning right. to do, you know, what am I, what can I do to fill myself with something that isn't for someone else? Mm. True selfishness means doing something that no one else could possibly benefit from. Ah. So self-care has a modicum of selfishness, but in truth, it has eternal worldwide benefit. Exactly. 
So I have to be a little bit selfish to practice self-care. Just like an athlete who may, you know, stand in like a tennis player stands in one of those ball spitting machines and is practicing and practicing and practicing, or someone who is a gymnast who goes over a part of their routine over and over and over again. Mm. Um, you're practicing in a non-challenging situation so that when you are being put to the test, mm -hmm. it's already in your muscles. It's already in your mind. You've been practicing the focus. You've been practicing the breathing. You've been practicing the movement. It's available. Mm. What if... I practiced self-care with as much vigilance and vigilance. What if I devoted some time each day to taking care of myself? Mm. Someone suggested that rather than saying, I don't have time for blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. This kind of makes me feel like crying when I say it, but... Mm -hmm. What you're really saying is I'm not worth it. I'm not worth the time. Right. Mm. I am. I am worth the half hour on the mat. I am worth the 20 minutes legs up the wall. Right. I am worth listening to, taking the time to listen to affirming music or an affirming podcast. Mm. I am worth it. Not that I don't have the time, but that I am worth it. Exactly. And how we spend our time is everything. Exactly. And exactly. being conscious of the words that we speak is so important. Mm -hmm. So what, how would you switch? What would you say to someone who constantly says, I don't have time for self-care? What would you suggest how they switch their phrasing and their thought process? With those harsh words, I'm not worth the time. Oh. And I think it would be shocking. Because mm. you are. You are. Speak to yourself as you would a friend. Mm -hmm. What would you tell your friend if your friend were suffering so much and was burning the candle at both ends? And, and, and in point of fact, when we overgive, we build resentments and we have expectations. Yes. So this gift is not free. Correct. So when I am giving other people, from a place of having nurtured myself, mm -hmm. the likelihood of my embedding resentment or embedding expectation is far less. Ah. I'm, a, I'm a human being and believe me, I have my hooks in a lot of stuff that I do. <laughs> but in general, in general, I choose to spend my time where the gift is of an open heart without a clawback it's beautiful mm. wow other thing that i think is important is that not all not all remedies are for all people and uh -huh. not any no single remedy is good for all time i like that say it again not all remedies are for all people and no single remedy is good for all time if you look back on your uh, for yourself you might say oh you know there was a time when I you know I oiled my skin every night before I went to bed I put sesame oil on and I just really took care of this largest organ in on the body yes and then one day I stopped and then I did it a second day and then I forgot for a couple more days and then that it just fell away. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the thing. Uh, I had moved into a specific breath practice where I was doing some belly rolling at, before I went to bed at night to improve my digestion. And evidently, I didn't have time for both. So I changed. Mm. You know? And to be gentle with yourself as you change, as long as you're not changing from something to nothing. Ah, so this is not, in my mind, this isn't permissible for me. Yes. I can't change from something to nothing, but I, I allow my, my sources and resources to change. Mm. 
You know, it's like when you're mm -hmm. all in, like, oh my God, there is nothing like this form of exercise. Right, you know, right, I, right. Just, I just can't get enough of this. Mm. Then one day, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, something to the novelty and the newness of doing things. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it is. It become makes it exciting, mm -hmm. and it's so good for your brain. The mm -hmm. brain That's thrives so on novelty and creativity. Mm. It. It's one of the four ways that we learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, we learn through repetition. We learn through inspiration. Uh, we learn through one other thing and we learn through novelty. Mm. And as long as I can keep doing my little brain ups <laughs> with one or more of those, <laughs> I am keeping my uh, outlook optimistic and interested mm, optimistic and that doesn't mean that i don't get tired and it doesn't mean that i don't get ill and it doesn't mean that my emotional state doesn't go into a phase which i call closed for repairs oh you know where the the dial just turned down everywhere mm. but because I am learning myself by practicing my self-care. I can notice when those fall away. I can notice when I'm feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I can notice when I'm kind of closed for repairs. And that happens through cycles of the moon, mm -hmm. cycles of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we have a lot of different cycles that go on within us, our fluids, our, our brain function, right. and everything goes through cycles. And sometimes they all line up in the couch potato day. <laughs> I give myself three days. Accept mm -hmm. myself. Accept myself where I am rather than fighting it. Acceptance. Acceptance is a form of self-care. Oh. So what have you experienced as tools for self-care? Well, exactly what you're saying is that regular practice, I think for me has been so crucial, especially over the last three, three years, having that routine and making sure like for me, cause I live by my calendar and actually you were the person who introduced me to the Bujo, the bullet journal. Uh -huh. So having it penciled into my calendar and having that routine and that schedule so that when the shit hits the fan and things get really intense i have that practice to rely on and i'm more resilient and i'm able to respond in that moment as opposed to be all stuck in my head and freeze because my tendency is to freeze and not do anything mm -hmm. um, so i have that practice it's in my cell so that i can proceed accordingly but i do like a daily satna morning meditation practice I, I've been adding an evening routine, adding some self-care practices just before bed, which includes uh, writing down all the great things that happened that day. And then dry brush. I added the dry brush, which I really like before I get into the shower. So just mm -hmm. a few things that yeah. I like to add. Yeah. And that's something that you bring up that's very important is writing stuff down. Mm. Uh, not not as a requirement of for, for, for fulfillment, because I think some of us think that a list is like a grocery list. Like you go to the store and you have to get everything. Right. Right. And if you can't find it, you get a reasonable substitute. Yes. Right. But really, you got to get the list. A list for me is, is a suggestion. It's more plastic. It's like I write down everything to get it out of my the, the train that's forever chugging exactly. along and then I can examine it and say okay what is the stuff that's more immediate what's a medium distance and what is something that is one of those things that I want to do that's traveling on that that kind of a parallel path that I want to attend to but isn't an emergency yes exactly and then I can lay on top of that appointments and uh you know, just the general is today a laundry day or isn't it right. a laundry day sort of thing, you know, stuff that you have going on. I told my husband this morning, remember, dear, that a, a man may work from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. 
does. It never does. After, after dinner, he's sitting back. You know, <laughs> and I'm like getting stuff together, cleaning up the kitchen, <laughs> setting things out for the next day. <laughs> Looking at my calendar, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Right. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But, but to know that that it, this is not it, items on the list are not a mouse trap. They're, mm. they're not gonna smack yeah. you if you don't get there. True. Some things can move easily. Some think things need to move with effort. Yeah, like you have to reschedule something because it just makes more sense to do that, to move the little lozenges around. Yeah. But it also can help with practice. Like you say, the sadhana that I love the writing down things that went well that day. I've got a, a little method that I do three things I loved about today that I write down every day. Uh, it really helps. It really cool. helps. Yeah. But remembering to write things down can help ease the gears from not just meshing, but grinding in your mind. Ah, that's true. That's so true. But I, the way my mind works too is like if I don't get it out, like it just loops circles mm -hmm. and it's just like in my head until yes. I write it. Then I can kind of like, ah, and then just what you said, you can decide the priority or the importance and mm -hmm. and then flow with it and allocate the time accordingly that's right and that is a part of self-care is to realistically look at what in many cases it's stuff i've assigned for myself mm. so yeah Exactly. I'd say it's probably 50 50. Some stuff is stuff that I just, you know, you just got to do. And then about 50% are good ideas that I've had. Right. But it, whatever it is, what, whatever the quality is, is to, to write it down and look at it with reason. Because as you say, if it runs around here, they all get mixed up. And when they get mixed up, they all look like they have equal importance. Mm. and it's really hard to choose and anything new that comes in just throws the game like oh can you come down and pick me pick 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 me I, yeah. don't you don't you know <laughs> I got all these things. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so yeah. so you can get thrown by by the smallest things but one thing I would like to say before you know before certainly before we end our conversation is that the last three years have peeled us. We have taken off all of our protective layers. Our nerves are very close to the surface. They're close to the surface because we have had a pandemic that we, in, for the first six months, had no idea. Just because we have an idea now about what was going on, for six months we lived in terror. We were washing our groceries. Hmm. We didn't know how things were going to turn out. We were uncertain in, in terms of our employment and our business. Uh, doctor's appointments that weren't emergencies were dropped. So we stopped certain parts of self-care. Hmm. Uh, just so many things uh, uh, got tumbled. <clears throat> that was one, only one aspect. At the same time, hmm. we were becoming more... Uh, politically traumatized yes and we were becoming socially traumatized we were becoming uh, being made aware at a much more visceral level what it meant to be an american mm. and when we talked about racism or culturism or genderism gender aspects whoa i know it was going all over the place and it still is uh but the impact to the kids to the individuals and to their parents there wasn't a lot of socialization mm -hmm. except for social media so people weren't getting the support they needed yeah the idea of what it meant to be a non-racist mm -hmm. expanded into turning into becoming an ally meaning that it wasn't just enough to feel neutral yourself, but you needed to learn to stand up. 
right ageist racist classist mm -hmm. uh, faith denomination the whole thing our and the idea of whether or not we were uh, entitled or uh, had, you know, were already given a step up in life was also being re-examined. Mm. And we were doing it in isolation. Isolation. It was such a mind. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And yes, thank God for online video platforms where we could talk to others. But like likes like. Right. So we all went to the groups that were reinforcing what we felt and what we believed, and we were getting no more additional information mm -hmm. about why would someone act like this and be like this? What were they fearing? What didn't they have? What were they afraid of having taken away from them? Mm. Nobody starts off evil or stupid. Right. You know, right, right, right. They, they, they start off tender. Tender. And then they fear losing something or not getting something. Mm -hmm. And that, that changes their form of belief and they like like. So they went off and liked the like that they liked mm -hmm. and were isolated. And wow. so now that we're coming back together, it's almost like even the people we know, we don't know. Correct. Yeah we're not sure anymore there is an uncertainty mm. am i going to have to defend myself do i have to defend someone else mm. that's on top of uncertainty at work you know family let's right. not talk about family <laughs> you know? uh, changes of job uh that is uh, the the way we have our job we've still got our right. job but the way we do it is different totally so there are so many more reasons that we are depleted. So it is so much more important that we actively look for self-care. Actively, proactively. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That is so true and such a great place to start to wrap it up is that you can do it. Find your self-care, be proactive, take action so that when the shit hits the fan what is it when the fire what's the expression when, the, when your feet hit the fire and the shit hits the fan <laughs> yeah. you're ready to go you got it you're just ready you're ready because <clears throat> even when things were fine you took care of yourself correct yeah. well thank you so much kiki this was so delightful i know it's going to help a lot a lot of people and i just absolutely love you and appreciate all the work and Oh. over the years it's just like amazing thank you so much thank you we're on parallel tracks i know yeah <laughs> thank you you're welcome take care <laughs>